All right, we're back here live in the Global Podcast Studios here in Atlanta, Georgia. Rich Castellano alongside Mr. Dwayne Hart. He's the author of The Cybersecurity Mindset. Uh, he's the podcast host for the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast. Um, and he has a YouTube channel and all kinds of great stuff. Uh, so if you are intrigued by cybersecurity, that's on your radar, and as it should be. You need to uh, reach out to Dwayne. You can actually just contact him at DwayneHart.com. On that website, DwayneHart.com, once again, you can check out his book, the podcast, um, YouTube, all that good stuff. So, Dwayne, uh, welcome back to the studios. Um, In our last episode, we were talking about the infiltration, no pun intended, of our water systems. (laughs) So now we're going to be talking about one of the hottest topics currently happening in um, in the world is AI has been on the rise for quite some time. But more recently, chat GPT. Yes. You know, it it has to be a discussion because one of the problems I've always seen with technology is that um, there need to be some type of tracking of its progress. You know, it's great to have technology in place, but if it's not tracked, if it's not any type of model created where, uh, let's just say a framework created where you can... Uh, instruct the vendors on the proper way to build these programs. We could we could be led by artificial intelligence <laughs> right, right. and other type of um, different different programs that are built. But but for today's topic, it is very important to talk about Chat GPT. Um, you know, one of the one of the ways that I'm seeing is that it's being used used to replace a lot of things that that people would do. Let's say, for instance, I was noticing that there was concern by, by like a lot of college, inst- college institutions when it comes to writing papers now. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we have some interns working with us and, um, and they're actually high school interns. I'm not sure if they're aware of this, uh, the chat BT, GBT, I'm sure probably they are. And we uh, have some assignments we're going to assign to them. And I'm kind of, uh, sitting on the fence of whether we should have them use that or not, because, um, you know, we've, we've been aware of AI, which is a great tool, you know, like any other tool uh, used properly. But eventually it's like, you know, we're not going to be creating any original content as people. No, right? no, no, we're not going to be doing that because one of the things I've always said about technology is this, what is the importance of it? And although it make our lives easy, but is it going to cause a critical critical concern about fifteen years from now? Right, All right. So, so we really have to have a grasp on it and to set up these committees and have some frameworks in place where where we do an in depth restudy. I mean, uh, study on this because the reason you want to do a study and you know to be accurate about it is because these type of platforms will go. Uh, change the future. Right. But at the same time, I think that society looks at this as a, a chance of ease. And I've yeah. always called it a change, a a um, a framework of ease because what is the most easiest way to get things done? Right. Because that's how humans are operating. Now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's been around since the invention of the wheel. Right. Right. And then it was the horse and carriage. But wait a minute, let's have a horseless carriage. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Henry Ford brought that to the marketplace. And we thought, you know, a lot of people thought that was a scary time. Right. Of like there's this a motorized vehicle. And then you can fast forward to, um, you know, let's get on a boat and travel transatlantic or you know, the Wright brothers come along and now we have air flight and a lot of people and then, you know, trips to the moon. So where does it kind of end? Right. So um, but again, use properly, um, especially in medical advancements and so forth and uh, helping people or cultures. But this issue of, you know, the chat GPT is another tool used as it is. It has some um, amazing benefits and outcome. Right. Yes. Yes, it does have some uh, Yes, it does have some amazing outcomes if it's used for a positive right. uh, way or if it's serve human needs in a right. way that that other type of technologies or or like some of the manual processes we've been doing yeah. do do not. I think it works well. Yeah. Okay. You know, let's just let's just sum it 
sum it up and look at something here that is most, most and most interesting. Now, now imagine a police officer, right? And let's say, for instance, if the police officer has a sensor on the side of his vehicle, right? And you go down the road and, you know, there's a tag on this car, which is to the left. Right. And as the police officer is going down the road, there's a scanner on his vehicle that scans every tag. Yeah. Right. Right. And it'll tell him who has not paid the um, tickets. Right. Who is wanted. Yeah. Outstanding warrant. Yeah. Right. And so <clears throat> forth. Now, all of that have to be fed through an, artif- through an artificial intelligence platform. Right. Now, now, see, now that's a great use of it. Right. But when it comes to uses such as in the financial industry, certain certain things just may cause issues. Now, I think that when it's something such as fraud with your banking account, I think it's most important because you think about if you rich was in California. Right. And you were shopping at a mall. Right. And then 10 minutes later. Someone in Atlanta, well, right. you know, let's just say, for instance, it shows that you were in Atlanta shopping as well. Right. The banking system should be able to probably catch that uh, transaction, right? Imagine if an artificial intelligence platform is sitting there and thinking like a human. Right. Because. Anticipating that in advance. Right. Yeah. And because most of the banks have like. 10 and 20 million transactions per second. Yeah. The human eye cannot oh, interpret yeah. all that information. Right. So you need these platforms. Right. Yeah, that you, is the positive side of using the platforms. Right. Yeah, you can't wait, like in the old days, until the bank statement came out in the mail, and then you reviewed your statement. Uh, at that point, it's you're you're now being very uh, reactive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny because that exact scenario happened to me. I was traveling to Tennessee and was using a, a bank card transactions, got a call from an 800 number, and it went to my voicemail, and it was saying to enter in these uh, the numbers and so forth to uh, to verify the fraud issue. But then I kind of started to question, based on all our conversations in cybersecurity, I'm much more... Um, with my hacker's hat, much more of a mindset. I was even questioning if that 800 number called to me was legitimate, right? So I actually, you know, was proactive and called the bank themselves to verify that. But um, but let's come back to today's topic about a- a- AI and chat GPT. And you mentioned about uh, use properly. So social media is another good example. And we've talked about that in previous podcasts where um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong on social media, but there's a lot of great things that have come out of that, like government transparency and so forth. And you, uh, it, people can react in real time. It's hard to be kind of, um, you know, there's great applications for that. Right. But now here's an issue flipping the coin about, uh, this generated artificial intelligence transforming cybersecurity. Let's talk about this in a case scenario about this actually aids both attackers and defenders. So, uh, cyber criminals, are, are uh, harnessing AI to launch sophisticated and novel attacks at large scale. And defenders are using the same technology to protect uh, critical infrastructure, government organizations, corporate networks. Um, I mean, your thoughts on that, right? That's two sides of that coin. Well, there's a dual relationship between cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Here goes the first type of relationship. The first type of relationship is that cybersecurity is supposed to protect the artificial intelligence platforms. Yeah. So you think of cybersecurity at the foundation and cybersecurity is um, making sure that private information is not shared. Also, too, is actually making sure that these platforms cannot be infiltrated or like accessed by the by like hackers or an unauthorized source. Those are the things that cybersecurity does because it's like the shield of protection. So you have an artificial intelligence platform right. and you put your defenses in place to make sure that it stays protected through cybersecurity. Now, now the second part is that cybersecurity uses artificial intelligence platforms for, for like risk, threats, and vulnerability a analysis process. Okay, because with 
because you think about all the different type of threat sources that you have in the world where you have um, Russia, China and different nations out there that are carrying out these different type of cyber attacks. Right. And, and and you imagine all the information flows that you have. You would have to have a team of 100 people to <laughs> right, sit there right. and, you know, to go out, yeah. go through all this documentation. Right. So so you can figure out what is actually going on. Well, artificial intelligence platform can go through any of that information and tell you how your organization is affected. So when it comes to the vulnerabilities there, it can identify on your system where you most vulnerable at. And now as far as risk, then it can take a calculated score and look at your environment and tell you how risky your organization is. And then it can give you some recommendations. Right. This is this is how artificial intelligence does its job in trying and trying to support cybersecurity. But but also along with the dual how can I, how can I say relationship? There is also a dual threat, right? Because imagine if some kind of way that a hacker could probably infiltrate that platform, which is the cybersecurity platform, and reverse engineer the artificial intelligence portion of it, right? Yeah. And then the artificial intelligence is supposed to tell you what your weaknesses are, right? It's, and also, too, it should be able to identify those threat sources that are most vulnerable. And if you're having any type of intrusion, it should be able to find those. But if you reverse engineer that, you will never know that you're being attacked. Yeah, it's like what program is talking to what program and who's ahead of the curve. I mean, in layman's terms, it's much like uh, I use, I'm sure many people do, Google Alerts, uh -huh. right? So once I uh, program in through Google Alert certain keywords, uh, anytime that anything happens on the Internet related to those keywords, I get an alert in my inbox. Right. Right. So what you're proposing is the same premise with uh, if you have a sophisticated um, chat GPT and AI and protocol in place, hopefully you're going to be one step ahead of the uh, the bad actors. Right. Um, because this is actually becoming a a tool that allows them to generate content. Um and, you know, talk about, you know, phishing emails, it can, you know, now it's more, much more sophisticated right. than a person writing it, right? Because it's anticipating um, all of your communication and is syncing that with, and it, now it looks like th a person wrote this. Well, well, right? well I want to say something, and I make this very simple to the audience. When we think of artificial intelligence, it's no, it's, it's no more than robotic software right right so when we have robotic software it takes the place of humans so imagine that a hacker has a has a mediator now which is the artificial intelligence platform that you set up and you say hey if you can go through these one million passwords and if you can infiltrate that database i want you to do this action here right and now what you have is a SQL injection attack where you create an unsecured channel and you get private information from the database and you cause a data breach because that platform can be um, programmed in a certain way where it follows the same steps as humans do. Because, see, we have to understand is that with artificial intelligence platform, once you put the platform into learning mode, it actually grabs and identifies the way humans operate and you load the data sets up. So, so what that platform does is kind of take on the mindset of a hacker is <clears throat> what it does. Yeah. It literally is the definition of machine learning, right? Yes, Which is yes. where this all came about. Right. Um, and it's morphed into something that's uh, a little, you know, sci-fi. Uh, but it also, what you also kind of described is the, what is it? ITT. I T T T, but if this, then that, right? Uh -huh. So that's where you put it uh, into your program, into your software, and into your AI. Mm -hmm. If this happens, then what? What's what's next, right? Um, the article you shared with me, I think it was, um, you know, fascinating and scary, or a very uh, observant uh, statement by a futurist that says, 
chat G- GPT is more like an alien, in quotes, more like an alien intelligence rather than a human brain. Um, so we have the technology, we have all these things, but at the end of the day, um, it's people analyzing. It goes back to your your uh, mantra and your mission is to educate people about these topics, right? And make them um, not just a hacker's hat, but have this mindset of like, uh, it's back to that statement a well-known president once said, trust but verify. Yes, right? yes, because because we rec- because this society has to track progress. Yeah. Okay, really, really track progress and know exactly where these technologies t- chat forms like chat GPT is carrying us because it sounds good. And right. I understand <laughs> the culture of ease and I call it the culture of ease okay. because people want to do things the easier way because if someone can press a button and have their paper written, right. <laughs> it, you know, it sounds good. Right. All right. But and, 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 I'm sorry. But I'll let you go. I say, unrelated to the issue of cybersecurity, another, um, there's a lot of legal ramifications of this, of using this model, this platform, ChatGTP, to write content, whether it's for, uh, you know, a college paper, whether it's a book. I was watching, a, um, I guess it was on Zoom or some podcast, whatever, they were talking about, like, uh, it was an article they're referencing, and they said, a person literally plugged in a topic for, like, a kid's book, and it literally wrote the entire children's book. And then they used another uh, platform to generate all of the uh, the drawings as if a kid drew it, and the book was done, right? So, I mean, it's just, um, so there's some great examples of this, um, but much like previous technology, you know, people were concerned about the internet at the beginning of the internet, right? Concerned about, you know, telephone lines, right? And, um, and airlines, right? But... It, it, it's, it's a trade-off, right? So we can't stop the advancement of technology. But I think to your point earlier is we have to be uh, cognizant about it, aware, and and have um, real human, you know, people. Remember, human, <laughs> uh, you know, besides technology and artificial intelligence, people kind of monitoring this and making uh, smart decisions, right? It comes down to... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, it, see, it comes down to something else I believe in. If chat GPT is used to gather references, let's say, for instance, you need references to go write a paper right. because you don't want to research like through this electronic library and go through like a million references. Right. If you could put in a topic and if it could give you a list of great references based on your paper. Right. Let's just say, for instance, if a professor was to give a student a uh, syllabus. Right. right? And if you could take that syllabus and you can paste it into an online chat GPT program and it tell you the best references to use to write that paper. I am on board with that. Yeah. At 100 percent. Right. Okay. Because now you simplified the process where where you don't have to search for the references, but you can use the references to write your paper. Yeah. As for the reverse, what is happening as we speak is high school, college kids, even um, employees assigned with their project. Uh, And this is what I I got sidetracked on earlier. I was talking about the legal uh, implications of this. There are right now court cases that are being presented with the issue of copyright. Right. So who owns this content and somebody's generating it somewhere. And if you're using this and claiming it and attaching your name to it and you didn't actually write this. I mean, it goes back to uh, the kids back in the day using the encyclopedia and just writing verbatim. And the teachers would be aware of this. Right. Because it doesn't fit. That student doesn't write that way. doesn't talk that way. You know, Johnny or Timmy doesn't speak that way. And all of a sudden they turn in a paper that is written at a. Uh, a college level or professor uh, language, it doesn't sink, right? And so whether it's employees, companies, organizations uh, creating content online that doesn't doesn't resonate with their previous content, all of a sudden what they've been writing for the last three years is is A. And now all of a sudden next week, they're writing content at the level of K and J, meaning 
chat GPT, uh, there's issues with that. Yeah, here goes. I mean, ethical. Now we're talking ethical issues. Here right? goes something I want to bring up. When I was writing, writing my book, now um, I was always in search of a program I could use because I want to, you know, catch errors, you know, from writing like some misspelled words and right. so forth, right? Because as a writer, you know, that's one of the uh, challenges I have is misspelling words. Right, right. All right. So, <laughs> so I got a co- copy of Grammarly. Grammarly okay. is similar to everything we're talking about yeah. because it will give some recommendations. Right. All right. Because it'll come up with some recommendations based on the way of, way of a sentence structure. Now, now, you know, the beauty of that is that as I was going through, through and using Grammarly, I was able to identify some, you know, more secrets to writing. Mm-hmm. And as I write now, I still have some of those same secrets on the inside of my brain cell. So, so now what I'm alluding to is that when you have a lot of the chat GPT programs, if you use it for learning purposes and references where it can guide you to finish a paper or if it can guide you on finding references or if you need to know the steps to cook a meal or something right, like right. that. Right. I think it's at most important. Yeah. OK. I, I mean, think it's at most important. That that's a great um, you know analogy or real world scenario, right? Because I concur with that one hundred percent. In that, if um, I mean, it kind of flips machine learning becomes human learning, right? So we've all used uh, when we're now constructing emails, it'll make suggestions of a combination of phrases. But but now as a person, as a human, you don't have to take that. It's not writing it for you. It's providing suggestions. But the more often you hear the uh, and see the correct way to compose. Um, you know, a, a a paragraph, if you will, or a thought. Now you're more like become the machine that's learning, right? And yeah. it's, it's it, it can be labeled as education, right? I mean, that's what from grade school to college. That's what uh, you're somebody. You're a person that you're mentoring. You're going to take their advice. Now it's just you know a form of uh, technology. So, uh, Dwayne, before you jump on the next topic here, I'm sure you have something right up your sleeve here, even though you're wearing short sleeves. Um, is I just want to remind our listeners, you're listening to uh, Rich Casanova here in our Global Podcast Studios. Our guest, our featured guest today, Dwayne Hart, um, all things cybersecurity. Uh, right now, we're currently talking, obviously, about chat, GPT, and AI, but he's actually written the book on this subject matter. So this is, uh, and not only the book, the um, Cybersecurity Mindset, but also the podcast as a host for, um, you know, I think third season now of the Chief of Cybersecurity Podcast. Uh, again, you can check out all content, all things related um, to cybersecurity and this subject matter at DwayneHart.com. So just go to DwayneHart.com. And speaking of Dwayne Hart, without the .com, Dwayne, what's on your mind now? Well, <laughs> well, there is one part of this discussion I want to bring up. Okay. And it talks about digital modernization because digital modernization brings into the fold about taking technologies and actually trying to advance those technologies to the next level, but also organizations that want to um, want to onboard some new technologies. So so in Chapter 17 of the Cybersecurity Mindset, I wrote a lot about digital monetization, but I think that one of the things I emphasize the most is that people should do their homework when it comes to digital monetization and just looking at some some chat GPT. If you think it's important that you have it, maybe you can do a case study. Maybe so you can find out that that you can use it to a certain standard. Let's just say, for instance, if you are a company that has to write a lot of papers. Right. You know, like you write in these documents for your customers. Right. Right. And it's like, 20 million customers that you need to write these documentations for. Right. Well, if it's based on certain type of parameters, like for instance, your loan has been approved. All right. If you put in all the customer information, names, name, address, you know, the amount of the loan requests, um, you know, the interest rate, all of those different parameters, and you put that into a chat GPT program and it can build a document for you. Right. I think it's important. And plus it takes out human error. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, right. That's, I mean, I mean, if you put the just one decimal off or change the date uh, by a year or something like that, that can the uh, that can have serious impact. I mean, and and speaking of the, the good news on that end too, is that we've all been on a website where it's after hours or you don't necessarily want to pick up the phone and call someone or try to type an email, you go to their chat box and that's all been pre-programmed for the most common questions. And generally nine times out of 10, you can get that uh, question answered and, or there's a computer again, machine learning interacting with the human to get the answer and serve that customer. Yes. Right. Yes. Because through the machine learning, you know, it actually does what it's supposed to do because it's the electronic brain. Right. Where it sits there and look at the behavioral characteristics of a human. All right. What is it that you like to do? Because it's a robot. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Figure out exactly what you like to do. And then it takes that information in and process the information and it creates the algorithms so that when the situation happens again, then, you know, the response is the same or the action is the same. Right. Right. So if we look at that same concept and chat GPT, right, how can it really aid cybersecurity? Well, what I'm thinking in terms of that, let's just say, for instance, if you're in a, uh, let's say, for instance, if you're in an organization and let's say you had an incident, and how most of these organizations have to do their reporting after right. after an incident. Let's just say, for instance, you can put in all the data points, right? Right. Well, it came from this IP address at this time, and I had three of my SQL servers that were affected, and also, two, we identified the threat source coming from this address. And you put that information in there, and you put the time, dates, and everything else, Right. and if it can create that report for you, I think it's a great tool. I think it works best. Yeah, because in theory, it allows the human brain to do what it does best, right? And takes uh, takes it off the plate so you can focus on more important, uh, you know, uh, goals and so forth. So um, we're almost out of time here. I want to close with um, some kind of good news from this uh, article that we're referencing. And I'll just read this here and interested to get your, your take or your thoughts on this, because uh, we talked a lot of the, the challenges with the, uh, the bad actors and uh, how uh, the cybersecurity criminals are using these tools, um, you know, to their advantage. But here's some good news to kind of, you know, wrap, you know, wind things down on. So, the, you know, in the, in the other side of the coin, the defenders are actually using AI to fend off attacks. Organizations are using the tech to prevent leaks and find, actually identify these networks vulnerabilities and be proactive about it. Also dynamic, dynamic, dy, dynamically uh, automates this task, such as setting up alerts. When I mentioned like the kind of Google alerts, so doing this sort of same thing for specific keywords, detecting uh, sensitive information online. And finally, these threat hunters are using AI to identify unusual patterns and summarize large amounts of data like you were referencing, um, and finally connecting the dots across multiple sources um, and to find these hidden patterns. So that's the, you know, that's the other side, which is, uh, gives us hope, right? Yes, yes. So, so we have to think about this entire scheme of artificial intelligence and also with chat GPT is that there is hope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is hope because based on everything you just said, this is what a lot of the threat, the threat intelligent platforms is, is supposed to do is to do that hunting is to go out there and say, okay, then there's a, there's a foreign IP address coming from, right. Coming, coming from this threat source. Now, right. you know, the question goes is this, why does that platform know that it's a foreign IP address because it's foreign because it's not part of the typical type of scheme that right. you have in your organization. Secondly is because through the machine learning format, you already have a list of IP addresses or like how the IP addresses are structured from China, Russia, and the other organizations, right? right? So you already know that. So, so if you see the first octet where it relates to China or something like that, where you can say, hey, you know, it's a problem. Right. But if it's that artificial intelligence platform, it'll go flash that red yeah, light. Exactly, yeah. Now, 
organization can choose to say, if you find this IP address, where well, you block it out. Right. All right. And then after you find the information, then you send it to a repository. Right. And you send the information to like this source here, because I've always made the statement, especially about rapid data analysis. Yeah. Rapid. Like in real time. Real time, right. as fast as possible is right. what you want when you work in cybersecurity yep. when it comes to these intrusions and threat intelligence. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll close on this and then I will sign off here. But I think one of the most interesting we shared before we went on the air is one of the last statements in the article was referencing it said, in quote, in the next 25 years, the world becomes a reflection of the Internet. It's just pretty, pretty um, talk about sci-fi and, um, you know, that it's, it's the reverse of what we anticipate, right? So basically what's happening on the internet, like they say in Vegas, but what happens on the internet, is it going to become um, what's happening in the world? Yeah, it's basically artificial intelligence is at some point there's going to be the tipping point where it's leading us. This is... right. This is my major argument. This is why we have to track progress. Yeah. Humans have to lead technology and artificial intelligence. You can't allow it to lead us. You know, this goes back to sci-fi. Right. And as you said it before, right? If you look at some of the movies I've seen before where, you know, they go create these robots. Right. And these robots get very smart. Yeah. And so they take on the forms of humans. So what the robots do is the robots becomes the enemy of humans. Right. See, they get smart. Yep. All right. So as as they get smart, see, they can process data a lot faster. Oh, big time. Yeah. Okay. See, they, they can start process- anticipating our next move before we even think of our next yes, move. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. you anticipate that. Yeah. And you start to create those uh, barriers. Right. And next thing you know. We are led by artificial intelligence. See, I don't, I think, and I say this over and over again, is that progress needs to be monitored. Yep. And, you know, we cannot move into a state where artificial intelligence lead us. Because I know for me as a person, I still have a problem sometimes <laughs> taking advice. <laughs> right, right. And especially from a device that's talking to you, you yeah, know. Yeah, and so. um, yeah, I met, I met, um, <laughs> actually I plugged in, speaking of GPS, but I plugged in GPS to come to the studio because I was coming from a different area of town than I normally do. And it was, um, and the GPS said, um, this uh, global podcast studios may be closed by the time you arrive. I'm like, you can't tell me that I'm operating the studio. Right. Hey. So use these tools um, in the way they were intended to right, and use them to your advantage to make your life um, better, more convenient, more efficient, take things off, off your plate, but don't use them just arbitrarily and, um, and blanket, just plug in everything. Uh, it goes back to mindset. Right. And on that note, <laughs> right. You yeah. done it, Rich. <laughs> Your cybersecurity mindset is active and it's in motion. Absolutely. Due to to the chief of cybersecurity, uh, Dwayne Hart, thanks again for joining us here in the studio. Uh, again, for all things cybersecurity, these topics and more, uh, get a copy of his book, uh, listen to his podcast, the YouTube, reach out to a, a, a Q&A, want to be a guest on the show, or you have some feedback or some insight. Uh, you can do all those things, and you won't need ChatBT or AI to do this. You just go to your friendly computer or your cell phone and type in DwayneHart.com. And we'll see you next episode. <laughs>